Right, this is the video for the for the lesson or section 11.3, which is geometric sequence. It's our last section in chapter 11. We did teach this. Uh, I taught this virtually in Teams, uh, but if you uh, yeah, so you can if you're watching this, you might just be watching it just to get a little extra help. Okay, geometric sequences. Geometric sequence is a sequence. <clears throat> A sequence of numbers in which the ratio call we call it R remains constant. Range constant meaning it does not change, it stays the same. Okay. The common ratios is that ratio that doesn't change is found by dividing each term. by its previous term. So all these things are, are dealing with multiplying and dividing, okay? Like from one, th when one term, you, basically you're gonna multiply by one thing to get the next term. That's, that's essentially how these are gonna go. And your common ratio is just what you're multiplying each term by, okay? <clears throat> so let's start with number one. Determine whether the following represent geometric sequences. If yes, identify the common ratio. So basically, if I'm multiplying the same thing from one term to get to the next every single time, then it is a geometric sequence. And I can find the common ratio. The common ratio is just that number that we're that we're multiplying each uh, thing by. Okay, so let's number one. From two to 10, I'm multiplying by five, right? So comes five. Again, here from 10 to 50 is times 5, and then 50 to 250 is also times 5. So yes, this is a geometric sequence, and my common ratio is 5. R is equal to 5. That's what that's what defines a geometric sequence, is the multiplying to each term. <clears throat> Number two, multiplying, or yeah, so, so it is multiplying, okay? So from here to here, from 135 to 45, um, what's happening here? We get a calculator. I'm going to do 135 divided by 45, or like 45 divided by 135, and one third. So basically, I'm taking a third of I'm divide by three to get 45. 45 divided by three, it's 15. So, <clears throat> yes, it's the same thing that you're dividing by every time, okay? So, this is, remember they told us to find our common ratio when it's not clear like that. It's found by dividing each term by its previous term. So, 45 divided by 135 is one-third. 15 divided by 45 is one-third. So, this is what you're multiplying by That's uh, each term. So, 135 times one-third it's the same thing as doing 135 divided by 3. So this, yes, is a common uh, a geometric sequence, and my ratio is 1 third. <laughs> okay, next. Let's see. So to get, this is times 3. Ooh, times, 18 times 3 is not that, so that's... Already right here. Doesn't work. So this is a big no. Alright, from here to here, multiplying times negative two. And this is times negative two as well, and times negative two. So that works, right? Yes, it does. R equals negative two. All 
Okay. This one. How about this would be times negative one half. Right. Okay, and then again, let's try that times negative one half as well. That would give us that. Again, times negative one half. Yes, so r is equal to negative one half. This is a geometric sequence. All right, for this one, they're all negative, so we're going to be multiplying by a positive number here. Negative nine times, to get from negative nine to negative 36, you, you multiply by four. And let's see, is 36 times four 144? It is. So that's all again. Check if 144 times four is 576. It is. So this is a geometric sequence with r being four. <clears throat> so this one says, given the geometric sequence, we're continuing geometric sequences now. Given this sequence, we want to find the next three terms. So first, to do the find the next three terms, you have to find the common ratio, and then use that common ratio to find the next three. Here, we're multiplying by negative three. Same here. So that's our common ratio. R is negative three. So 63 times negative three. 63 times negative 3 is negative 189. Multiply that times negative 3. You get 567. Multiply that times negative 3. You get negative 1701. Next terms. Okay. From 3072 to 768. So I do 768 divided by 3072. I get uh, you're a one fourth, so that means we're multiplying by one fourth. So r is equal to one fourth in this case. So you, can, you have options. You can either multiply each term that you get by one fourth, or we could just do what? Divide by four. So starting at 192, multiplying by one fourth, or dividing by four, I get 48. And then I get 12, and then 3. <laughs> <clears throat> Next. Just multiplying half by a half. Just halving everything. So, this would be half of 2 is 1. Half of 1 is 0 0.5. Half of 0 0.5 is 0 0.25. Or a half and a fourth. All right, this one we're multiplying everything by positive five. So, negative 125 times five is negative 625. Times five of that, you get negative 3125. And times that by five, you get negative 15,625. The nth term of a geometric sequence can be found. So what's, we're now be doing a geometric sequence formula. Okay. So we have a formula. We're going to define a, little, a few variables real quick. A, I write the term A1. That just represents the first term in the sequence. Okay. R, of course, is my ratio. So, if I want to find the nth term, since a1 was the first term, we'll say that a sub n is the nth term. This is going to equal whatever your first term is, a1, times r to the n minus 1. Let's break this down. <clears throat> since you're multiplying r every single time you get the next term, okay? Essentially, what you've done is you start with the first term, you've multiplied r n minus 1 times to get there, okay? Like, so you're multiplying r a bunch, a bunch of times, and this we get there eventually, uh, like that. So, like, as an example, this 125 is just negative 5 times 5 times 5, right? How many 5s? This is our, our ratio was positive 5. We multiplied 5 twice to get here, to get that and this is my first term so negative 
5 times 5 squared would have been using the formula to get that negative 125, right? So we're going to write the rule for the nth term, then find a 7, okay? So all I really need to do is find r first. So first find r. So from 3 to 9 is times 3, so r looks like it's going to be 3. My first term, a1, of course, is also 3 here. So we're trying to find a so our formula would be a sub n equals 3 times 3 to the um, n minus 1. Now, we want to find a 7. That means n is 7. So a 7 is going to be 3 times 3 to the 7 minus 1. So 3 times 3 to the 6th power. So I'll put that in my calculator, 3 times 3 to the 6th power, and that's just equal to 2,187. Okay, again here, looks like my common ratio is negative 5. So my formula for a sub n is negative 4 times negative 5 to the n minus 1. So for, to find a7, it's negative 4 times negative 5 to the 6th power. So let's try to my calculator. Negative 4 times negative 5. Now we have to be careful here. We're going to put parentheses because we're dealing with that negative that's being raised to an exponent, okay? So that's important, especially in the calculator. So what I, did, what I get is negative 620, no, 62,500. That's my answer. So very important that we have, if, the negative number is being raised to that power, then you put the x the parentheses around it in the calculator. <clears throat> All right. Here we go. I have I multiple I'm halving everything. It looks like so r is going to be one half. So a to the n equals four hundred times, remember, when we're dealing with fractions, those are r as well, it's a good thing to put parentheses in here as well. There's my formula. So a7 is equal to 400 times 1 half raised to the 6th power. 400 times parentheses, fraction button, 1 over 2 raised to the 6th power is 25 over 4 or as a decimal would be 6.25 wherever you feel like writing decimal or fraction doesn't matter to me Let's look at this one, number 16. So my common ratio is not as clear. So when it's not clear, I like to just take my second term, 240, negative 243, divide by my first term. And so I had the, I, had, I typed it wrong in my calculator, 243 out of 234. Okay, I get that R is negative one third. It'll always work to get your common ratio by taking this term divided by the one right before it. Okay. So <clears throat> my formula is a n equals um, 729 times parentheses negative one third to the n minus one. So a seven is 729 times negative one third raised to the sixth power. So let's type that in my calculator. 
729 times parentheses fraction or, for negative button fraction button 1 over 3 to the 6th power that's just equal to 1 oh that was cool nifty there you go okay that's that I think we'll be done enough of that